If you look critical to this horse, and I know you will because people always are, are criticizing some something what they see, you will see that he's wet, he is washed, and he's standing on a chain. And that's something I learned uh, in Spain, to put a horse on a chain. If he pulls, it will be impossible for him uh, to break the chain. The halter might break, but it's a way of teaching horse how to be tied up. I noticed in many different countries that people have different uh, habits. And I, th I think that's very interesting. If I look at the United States, for instance, where uh, are more cowboys, they tie horses long when I look at, uh, on a long rope. When I look at Mongolia, um, they put a rope above, they ride ponies, they put a, a rope above and the ponies are, are tied up with uh, the rope upside. When I look at my own country, I see a lot of horses who are tied up on the, on the height of the chest. And I also see a lot of problems in tying up horses. If you have to tie up a horse, um, well, sometimes people say, I don't want to abuse my horse, and so my horse is not being tied up. Okay, that's sentimental don't, uh, nonsense. I mean, there will be moments when your horse has to stand for a while and be able to be tied up. Some people say I will never get sick, so my horse is, I'm the only one for my horse to, to take care of. Well, that's nonsense. There will be a moment that somebody else will take care of your horse. Anyway, I think to, to stand tied up on a, on a halter is very, very important. It's a lesson, it's a basic lesson. So you have different um, ways of tying up, chest height, uh, this is sort of Spanish, even though it's in the Netherlands, of course. Uh, chest height, higher, this is 150, around 150, and like Mongolia, uh, to, the, to the ceiling. I actually think that the Mongolian people uh, have quite a point there, because it's impossible for a horse to get tied up uh, with his legs. When, uh, when a rope, for instance, is too long, these horses can get themselves into trouble if they start rolling or whatever, or they get the need to do so. They can get themselves into quite big problems. And that's something you want to prevent. You don't want any problems with your horse. And you want your horse to be able to calm down and to have a good life. When, um, what I also see is the difference in halter. And it's something, this is my principle, and if people think different about it than they can. Um, Sometimes I see horses tied up on these rope halter, and I want to tell you, uh, and I will f look for a picture. I had a picture I made uh, of, of a horse that had problems with such a rope halter, and it was really cut behind his ears, and it was so sad to, to see. I mean, that hurts, and that traumatizes a horse, so the horse could never be really good touched behind his ears. It made a wound because the horse was, well, whatever happened, uh, the horse doesn't tell anything in words, but he shows in, in behavior. So this horse was had problems behind the ears. Well, that causes trouble because you have a head collar behind the ears. You have all kinds of things uh, to do behind the ears. And I think we are responsible to, to uh, teach our horses uh, how to deal with our um, environment. To me, um, a stable halter, this is, I make a difference in between halters and I will make a video uh, about how I see that a stable halter is uh, when you are taking care of your horse. And I have a special other halter which I use for lunging and I have a head collar which I use for riding. I don't use them all three. It's a principle I learned from somebody, uh, actually a stallion um, owner who had breeding stallions and who said, when I put on this hat color of, of, of the horse, he knows he's conditioned, he knows we are going to um, do breeding. But when I put on his stable halter, and I, which I do daily, then the horse is not getting excited, then the horse is just acting normal. And I thought, well, you have a point there. So, that's what I want to tell now about uh, 
haltering a horse and teaching a horse without being there, teaching a horse how to stand still. I didn't teach him this. Uh, actually, he was he was trained in Spain, and he they they did a marvelous job. They made a real real calm, balanced horse from him. Now you can see the horse is a little bit insecure. I put uh, one of the horses who is normally uh, inside, outside in the, in the field. <coughs> And he's upset about that. He uh, he worries. He wants to see all the horses. He's a stallion, still. I'm not going to feed this behavior. I'm just letting him find out himself what should be the best solution. And he knows because he has learned this before. He knows that the best solution for him is just to calm down and just wait until something else is happening. You can see him already calming down. When I was <coughs> Why do stallions shout so much? They use their voice pretty much. That's a very easy answer. They do it to know where the other ones are. Normally they another stallion will answer and so they will know where everybody is. He's a little bit worried because uh, well the white one is out of sight. He can't see him now. He can see another horse still but here you see the excitement. Yeah, it's it's pissing, uh, urinating. Pissing is might be a word that upsets you. <coughs> urinating a little bit, and it's um, well, it's excitement. I'm not going to feed this behavior. If you feed the bad behavior or the behavior actually you don't want, I mean it's totally normal, perfectly normal horse behavior. I can't blame him for being horse and I can't blame him for being a male horse, being a stallion still. So I'm not going to, to <coughs> feed this behavior. I just noticed that my neighbor also put his horse outside and that excites him too. So for him it's a pretty exciting moment. Still, <coughs> still he learns by being on on the chain, by being himself, nobody interfering his thing, he learns that the best thing he can do is just wait. That's all. And he's pretty young, he's seven years old, so that's pretty young. Ah, there's the neighbor putting the other horse outside. So he will be excited again. Try to focus on it so you can see what excites him. You see? Is this sad? This is the way it is. This is what happens. This would, would also happen on a riding school, uh, no matter what, what kind of horse you are. There will be horses walking up and down and you have to get used to it. That's learning and we people think that we are the ones who have to teach all horses everything. But horse people know that horses learn themselves and most of it is, is learned by themselves. He's watching, and that's <coughs> very normal. And it, it excites him, that's very normal. And I'm going in when he's calm, when he's just standing there, then I'm going in. On the other hand, I can wait for some time now because I think it's very important for him to get used to everything what happens around here, even, uh, even if it excites you, I don't care. Now he's watching me, you can see he, he's watching behind. Where, where the ear goes, goes the eye. Um, he has to learn, he has to be able to adapt on, on our place, on our situation.